I'm Chris Whitmer, camera operator, cinematographer, and director of photography. I've had the Sony RX-10 Mark II now for about going on six months. And then I've taken this little thing everywhere. It's done things that I didn't think this camera could do or would be good at, and it excels at them. For video production, cinematography, this camera is probably the best for your money. It has the most features for the lowest price and it beats out or equals almost every other camera that you can buy with an attached lens or without an attached lens to some point all the way up to $5,000. I would say that is when you would have enough of a difference between a camera to actually get features that this one doesn't really do. We're going to go over a lot of things this camera can do, the things it can't do, things I like, things I don't. This is a review of the Sony RX-10 Mark II. We're going to go over right now the negatives before I get into the positives with this camera. Um, obviously I wasn't paid by Sony to do this. Uh, this is not one of those, ooh, Sony sent me a camera and I got less than 100 subscribers. I wish. <laughs> not one of those people. Um, so the negative stuff about the camera is video wise, I would say number one, uh, it stops at 30 minutes still which is very annoying. The newer model doesn't do that. Uh, and there's a Panasonic FC2000, which I would, I, would, I would bring her along as the A cam and this be your B camera, because that one is better at a couple of things. This one just isn't, and it's around the same price, and it's new. But image-wise, it's not better. It's equal, if not a little, little less equal. However, it has some features like continuous record time, which this one does not have, and that's a negative. But it's 30 minutes, so you rarely have issues with that. And even if you do, uh, the output just can keep going. So if you just plug it into like a little Atmos Ninja or something, a little Atmos Star, you're fine. Another negative is micro HDMI. That's your clean output, which is preposterous, and it will break on you eventually. So just be very careful with it. Uh, uncompressed, and boom, here's the big, fat, juicy, high bitrate, you know, uh, file format you want. Um, so there's that. But that's the only negative. The, uh, the, the it's also a positive. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it is micro HDMI. Uh, the battery life is a little short. Not horrible. Not Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera bad, but not good. You only get about an hour and a half on a battery. And there's no battery packs. Maybe you can jam the one in there from the A something line. Maybe that'll work. And that's the only negatives. At least I see video wise. I don't see any other negatives with this camera. This camera has impressed me um, far, far beyond my expectations. And at this point in time, with the budget I have, it's pretty much sealed the fate of camcorders uh, that pretty much it needs to be an incredibly high level camcorder almost a professional camera at that point not prosumer anymore talking five six grand 
because every other camera under that, except for a couple of companion, except for a companion hybrid camera that just came out to this cam, uh, the Panasonic version of this camera, pretty much. Um, I would say the, the new Panasonic FZ2000 is the only camera better per dollar that has an attached lens that's not five grand. Period. That is interesting because this camera can do things that hybrid cameras aren't supposed to be able to do. It does things that only camcorders should do and it does them better. Little things about my ears and sleep Little things I cannot sleep, I cannot sleep Ooh, yeah the past six months or so every event everywhere I've gone this camera has been in my bag and I've used it everywhere I've used it everywhere from Chicago to Milwaukee to Indianapolis I've used it in Detroit I've used it in South Bend I've used it uh, at multiple colleges I've used it for sports it's great at sports I've used it at comedy shows I've used it at uh, a Jewish synagogue in Wrigleyville in Chicago. I mean, I have used this camera in every fathomable circumstance. I've taken this camera everywhere with me for six months, and that's why you have all this beautiful B-roll to look at instead of this rather drab room that I'm filming in. I'm just a child, a child, a child. And you're just a Good, just a good, good man When I run these streets wild I'll rest in knowing you Have your plan Now when I first got the camera I thought this little thing would be horrible at sports video wise I thought it'd be terrible at it. I thought it'd be bad at replacing a camcorder for broadcasts uh, for sports and not just getting highlights like actually plugging into a switch I thought it'd be terrible doing this kind of thing set up because I brought the wrong XLR adapter so audio was going to be a nightmare. I thought it was going to be terrible and that org and the branch would just suck. I, you know, doing this kind of thing with that. I thought I was just going to be able to get some stuff and I'd have to pick up another camera eventually after all. It's only 800 bucks. You know, it's just not going to be great. It's not going to be as good as a professional camera. But was I wrong or was I wrong? I'll tell you right now, I was wrong. I'm gonna talk about the first thing I brought up. We're gonna talk about the main thing I filmed, sadly enough, sports. Now don't get me wrong, I do enjoy filming sports, but I also like filming other things. But people see you film one thing and you kind of get pigeonholed. But uh, I took this camera and I was just playing around at Purdue University where, I, I, uh, where my one job is. and. I shot some highlights, some footage of a tournament. There were two teams that we didn't really care about, and the game was blown out by about 50 points. It was very unfair, and it was preseason, so we were pretty much, you know, okay, whatever, we're, we're good here. And we just ran the wide camera. The broadcast kind of just said, all right, go take a break for the next, you know, two hours. This game's done. 
and I walked downstairs and I put this camera on my gimbal, which I received the day before, and even off the gimbal, and it did some things that I just couldn't believe. Because I hadn't really paid much attention to that, but I realized I had a constant f2.8, 10 times optical zoom range powered lens. And this baby is tack sharp, wide open or closed all the way, all the way through. And so I'm doing these, these broad broadcast zooms and it's keeping up and it's not slow and it's not getting in the way and it's better. It's better than a camcorder. So if I shot at 120 frames a second, and it looks amazing, doesn't it? It's bright, it's crisp. I mean, you could scale that up from 1080 to UHD and no one would ever know, because it's just so god dang good looking. And not only now did I have a Carl Zeiss lens, better than most lenses on camcorders today, that zooms just as good, if not better. I have this crisp 120p and it just looks amazing, even when it's not slowed down. For sports, I mean, wow, 120p looks amazing. Um, it just, wow, it looks so good. <laughs> it's so crisp. And uh, if you need a replay camera for like an ESPN3 crew or a W.TV crew for you folks out west or, um, you know, your mid-range to high-range school or professional sports club and you have your own video crew or you're in a smaller size city and you have a call scene when you need a replay camera I just pick this thing up for 800 bucks save yourself 10 grand and you're gonna have the brightest clearest 120p camera you're gonna have and if it's in that mode and you're using the HDMI out and then adapting the SDI you are gonna be blown away at the quality and the brightness of the image it is absolutely amazing. Isn't good at sports videography. It is better 
than all entry level high definition camcorders. If you have a high definition camcorder, it's under $5,000, it's not one that does 4K, it blows it away, throw it out, replace it with this, it's far cheaper and far better. And it has that 4K sensor, so the 1080 looks amazing. It looks better than any 1080-only camera will ever look. And if you really didn't, and, and, and if you can get away with broadcasting 30p for sports, you could use this in 4K mode and just use a 1080 out from the camera, and you'll have beautiful, beautiful high-resolution imagery right into your 1080 whole whole 1080 HD system at 30p, and it, you're gonna blow the socks off of everybody. Even if you have it in HD mode, it's got that 4K sensor anyway, so it's got all that detail. It's amazing, it looks so good, and it's so bright. No matter how dim or crappy the lighting is in your gym, you'll be able to shoot 120p, you'll be able to shoot 60, and it will be so bright, you're gonna have to cut down to F4. It's amazing. Does that mean it can do events well? Well, I took this camera to Chicago. And I filmed slow motion all the way there because it was just so good. And I, this was the HFR stuff, so it's nowhere near as good as the 120D. Um, but here's a little bit, here, here are some clips of that. And when I went to Chicago, and, and this was in, in August, right after I got it, and I didn't think it was going to be good enough to get the job done, I was very nervous. <clears throat> I had bought the wrong XLR adapter, so I didn't have XLR, I just had the quarter inch in, and I was very worried about the preamps. I thought the audio was going to be terrible, and it was just going to be bad. I show up to a Maximini comedy show with this camera. I plug it in. I plug the audio in and it, it's perfect. The preamp is doing an amazing job. It's, the audio is, it, it's perfect for what I'm doing. And it's in this dark theater, 
And I'm next to an old uh, H JVC HM100, the small SD card camera from way back. And the guy's at 12 dB. I'm at ISO 400 at F3. He's at 12 dB at 1.8. My camera's bright, my camera's crisp, my camera looks amazing. The focus is spot on. This camera does events as good as a camcorder, but it's gonna be brighter than almost all camcorders except for the ones I mentioned. Even the Z150, it's darker than this camera and it's not worth three grand. I mean, the client was incredibly happy with the footage. The best they've seen. And I also use it on a music video, an all is well music video. I want to show you shots from that here. And the depth of field this camera can get is astounding. It blew me away. Very equivalent to Super 16, it's actually better than Super 16, it's a little bit bigger. The depth of field is awesome. It's just awesome. It's not too thin, it's not too deep, it's just perfect. It blows me away and it's equivalent as a B cam to a five or ten thousand dollar camera, I can cut right in there and no one would know. And as you can tell from the footage, the, the depth of field, it's just great. it looks better than Super 16 film. And I absolutely loved the look of TV film from the 90s and the fact that it looks better than that. And it's so similar to it. It's amazing. Truly an inspiring camera when you do narrative work. And it can cut with any camera out there. Any camera that's not, you know, $10,000 it'll cut with. You know, I don't know if you could really tell. Sony made the best camera I think they're ever going to make in this camera. Thanks for watching my review of the Sony RX10 Mark II, the death of a camcorder. Um, and if you don't need to plug this into a switcher, then uh, really, unless you want to spend thousands of dollars, this is probably best bang for buck right now. I hope you have a happy, happy new year. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please let me know in the comments if it helps you with your camera selection. Once again, I apologize for any audio issues for having to have the heat on. <laughs> uh, and uh, have yourself a wonderful day. I'll catch you guys in the next one.